here is one of my two heads this one uh, as it says there it's a Mexico head not sure what the uh, casting numbers mean I'll look them up and uh, give you a little uh, text thing at the bottom here in a sec and then I'm going to use that as my valve spring compressor and then I will be able to remove the little uh, cleats and then these caps pop the valves out uh, give them a little bit of a clean do a little bit more just making sure everything's neat and tidy up in here and then hopefully on the underside I will uh, spend a little bit of time lapping the valves to make sure that everything is uh, as it should be I will also be lapping in here the uh, jugs so that there's a better fit this one there's no obvious blowout uh, on the other one uh, the valve springs are already removed there are is uh, some blowout so uh, clearly I was losing a teeny bit of compression and also needs a clean can you see where my oil leak might have been yeah it's not the greatest tool but it'll do the job that I need it to do what I noticed on the uh, other head was that there are times when I'm pushing this down the whole valve goes down too see if you can see that in here see how it's open and <clears throat> so what I did was just give it a little bit of a shot like that and now it is oh, no not yet hold the spring retainer in place there we go. So by doing that, it now allows the uh, little retaining clips in there to be a little bit more easily removed. Note that I used this end of the hammer, not this end of the hammer, and I hit it right in the center so that it's on the stem itself, not on the edges where you might crack. It may not be how the pros would do it, but it's how I'm doing it. And then you use a pretty strong little magnet. Try to get in there. One. Only problem is when the valve keeps dropping down. So now I need to get something to go underneath it. Just a pair of work gloves. They're gonna hold the uh, valve in place second clip spring cap valve and again no damage Still has the Volkswagen stamp on it. Every once in a while, this uh, spring compressor pops off. It's a little bit extra wide in its jaw. And this is actually the smaller of the two I could have bought. So it has a tendency on occasion to want to pop off the spring I will probably edit ahead to uh, when both of these are off because um, it's either going to be exactly like this or it's going to be, I don't know, a monkey trying to play football. So uh, you'll see this 
the uh, valve springs removed in uh, three, two, one, and done. Valves are off. Everything's looking pretty good. Again, nothing I'm too worried about. Um, it's not a perfect head. You can see there's a little bit of there's a dent there and that, but you know. For what I'm trying to do, I think I can run with it. Thought I could give you a quick comparison of the two heads so you can see what I mean by leaks. Okay, so these are the push rod tubes. Remember, the, this sits in the engine this way. Okay, intake manifold drops down in here, right? And then the jugs and everything. Okay, so top of the piston, boom, boom, boom. Push rod tubes, see that area? These old nasty seals. Okay. Compare that one with its partner. This one's got a lot of grime on it. Might have a leak here, but uh, this one seems to be blown out at multiple points, if not all four. This has a lot of slime here. Not much around here, 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 a little bit right there. So uh, again, a little bit dirtier. Now, in terms of blowout, let me give you a sense of what I'm talking about. So, this will wipe off the quick and easy stuff, but not the hardcore burn on stuff. So you see on this head, pretty clean. A little bit of something there, but again, it's not really blown out this way. This looks like it might actually be more just uh, oil stains. Same here, pretty clean. Now, we look at the other one. Again, give it the same quick wipe down. And you'll clearly be able to see what I'm looking at. Okay, so first off, is over here a lot of buildup as if gases are escaping this way not something coming in this way from outside the jug so I'm thinking it possibly down in here does not have a tight seal so some of the combustion gas can blow that way over here I think that's the same as that sort of just a bit of oil but uh, you can see there's a lot of buildup pretty thick buildup around this one more than any other and I did have one cylinder that had particularly low compression I don't know whether it was this one or the other one but I do know that it was the number three which would have been in this position of these two if this was the driver's side head that would be number three so I am going to clean this up I am going to use some lapping compound and lap the jugs in on all four and uh, clean them up all clean looking pretty good had to get in here a little bit a little bit here not terribly concerned about uh, the carbon build up there just don't need to scrub at it when I'm gonna put it all right back but I did go along the uh, inside of where the uh, jugs sit largely cleaned up there Again, I'm not looking for acid dip spotless, otherwise I'd pay for acid dip spotless. In there, looking pretty clean. Back in here, mating services looking pretty clean. Same thing here. So now I'm just going to uh, go after the valves and springs. Give them a little bit of clean and uh, what I'm going to use is I had some uh, 800 grit 5 inch sanding discs that I am never going to use. So I will use those because they will remove basically nothing. If you look at the uh, episode I did on rebuilding and sort of merging the 034 and the 009 distributors, 
using a bit of you know 400 uh, or even 800 grit um, it can take off microscopic amounts but uh, not too terribly much and it'll just kind of get them smooth and clean and I believe I will double check but I believe that these have oil in here and we do not have um, valve stem seals so if there's a little bit of oil moving past the valves um, I don't think that's ter or getting up near the valves is not terribly concerning because the way this thing is canted right the valves going that way are not going to uh, have oil go from down in here up the valve stem and into the combustion chamber so uh, again I'm gonna make sure it's a pretty good fit I'm not taking metal off I'm taking uh, crud if you look at them I'm gonna take off a little bit of that carbon buildup a little bit down there but other than that I think we'll be alright so alright uh, on to rebuilding just a quick look at the before and after so you can see just all the crud that's been built up here a little bit cleaner so now I just got to go after the stems these have all been done and then I can reinstall them All right, valve stems all cleaned up. Now I'm going to uh, pop them into the heads and do some valve lapping. I do have my lapper here and a little bit of uh, Loctite Clover compound grinding and valve lapping. A little bit of oil on the stem. This is where a little bit is all you need. Don't think of it like uh, toothpaste. That should be more than enough. Here's hoping my cheap performance tool will work. If you listen as it goes, You'll notice that the um, pitch of the grind goes from quiet, uh, quite low to a little bit higher and smoother, sort of a finer sound. And that's when you know you're about done, from what I understand. So that one's pretty good. So let's see how that looks. Okay. There you can hear it getting a little bit higher in pitch. All right. So the way I'm going to do it, uh, two valves, then I'm going to do the springs so that I know that these are lapped to these seats and then I will install them fully completely and then with the springs and spring uh, valve retainers and all that then I'll move on to the next two next two next two work my way through obviously when you're done with the lapping compound you need to clean it off and I am going to do that 
Thought I'd show you this. If you look here, you can see the ring all the way around. That is where it has been ground to match the seat. And the seat, not sure how much you can see on that, has also uh, a similar ring all the way around. So I know that this valve and that seat are nicely matched. This is just going to help a little bit with compression. We don't want the leaking past the valves and it'll just run a little bit better. If I were building this long term, I would do a bit more thorough of a job um, on here and on the valves. But for now, when I know again that I'm going to hopefully do uh, a bigger build in the next few years, uh, this is just to uh, make sure that everything works the way it should, at least for the short term. So that's held in place. I've got the cap on the spring. Drop the spring down. And now I have the fun of getting the little retaining clips installed. A little bit of grease. There's one. This is where it gets tricky. Never done this before, so uh, if you experts out there know I'm not doing something right. I agree. There we go. See how we did. Well, it didn't fly off and hit me in the face. Done, done, now moving on to the uh, next one. Next spring, next cap. Much easier to compress the spring when it's not on the valve head. See how compressed it gets. This thing works pretty well for holding it in. I mean, for the cost, I'll take it. Okay. Next retaining clip. into a spark plug hole. That's not ideal. Okay. One half is in. 
the grease is not for anything other than sticky. You just want it to, if it goes into its seat, you want it to stay there. That's all. This is not for lube. This is not a part that really needs to be lubed. Once I feel like I got the uh, retaining clips in, I pull up because that puts them in their place, locks them into the cap, and then I'm letting the tension off, not by having the spring go up into the retaining clips, but down into the valve head. And I think that is uh, helping me out here. So. Get off of there. All right. Both in. So now all I got to do is that same procedure six more times. I'm not going to show you all that. I'll just uh, cut to the uh, completed valves. All right, see you in a bit. I want to uh, lap in the jugs here and get this surface uh, cleaned up. I don't want to scrub around real hard in there, so what I'm going to do is just focus on that surface there. So same with here. You can see where the, uh, if you look here at the rings, you can see where the jugs sit. Um, you can put in copper gaskets. I'm not doing that. I've heard that it's not ideal. Um, now you're trying to make three different metals, aluminum, steel, and copper, to uh, work together. Uh, I think we'll just use the steel jug here, which I've put on the lapping compound on the lip. And I'm going to pop it on there and give it a good scrub. This is micro-polishing. This is not about taking out major scratches or chips or anything like that. This is just about making sure a nearly flat surface is that much closer to being a flat surface. I have verified that this uh, lip, right, this edge is dead flat. Put it on a piece of glass in order to do that. So I know that it will give me a good scrub of the uh, mating surface on the aluminum head. It will take off very little of this. It's not changing compression ratio, anything like that. Propping up the heads, by the way, two by four works nicely. up so you can see uh, how that ring has really cleaned up nicely it's even all around compared to something like that it's a little bit more messy so I'm gonna do the other one and then I'll do the same thing on the other two heads or the other two uh, jug mating services Thank <laughs> you. 
Remember that all of this is to prevent uh, blow-by, which I think I had a minor case of, not a major, minor. So uh, every little bit will help. Again, noticeably better. So that should work well. All right, I'm about to put the uh, rocker arm on. So first thing, a little bit of assembly lube. Right there. Don't care if I get it over the things. Just a little extra sticky to hold itself, hold the uh, lube in place. the assembly Okay, the service manual. If you don't have it, get it. Very useful. Uh, has the tech, the uh, torque settings, and it is 18 foot pounds. There's that. Done. One refurbished head. On to the next one. And I'm done. I've done everything I set out to do. They needed a good clean. I needed to make sure there were no uh, failing parts. I've done that. I have chased the threads for the exhaust studs and for the intake manifold. I have lapped the valves. Everything I set out to do. So I'm going to call this a win. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you like, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, don't give me a thumbs down. I don't need that. This is just a hobby. I'm not trying to make money on YouTube. And, uh, you know, please subscribe. Leave a comment. If you have any questions, you have anything, uh, advice on what I should do next or how I should do it better for either building the bug or putting these videos up, just let me know. I'm doing this for fun. And, uh, unfortunately, I will only be able to put these out so quickly because, uh, as with many of you, I'm sure, my life has a tendency to get in the way of my hobbies. So, time to go.